All right, it looks like it's 12 o'clock, and so we'll want to get started here pretty quick. If you have children, we do have children uh, care taking going on next door in the, uh, the little green building. There's three ladies over there working with the kids, so if you have a little child that would like to go over there and play, then they're welcome to do that. Um, I hope you, it sounds like many of you really enjoyed the first section, and I think we'll equally enjoy the second part as well. Uh, don't hesitate. There's lots of food over there. Don't hesitate to go get another sandwich uh, or grab one on the way out. But we want to thank the ladies for working so hard to get all that put together. Also want to uh, thank the guys who worked here yesterday and did some cleanup around here, and the place really looks nice, and I want to thank you guys. Um, Dr. Claire, are you ready? Okay, he's waving. His, he's waving. He says he's ready to go. If you've enjoyed him so far, give him a round of applause. As, uh, as Dr. Clary comes, I do want to uh, do want to let you know that our um, we have a Facebook uh, every every uh, Sunday. We're on Facebook and and, and on YouTube, and this program will be on Facebook and YouTube. Uh, but we have a couple that that watch every Sunday from uh, Kansas and Lucretia and and her and her husband are here today with us and. They called. They messaged me and said, "Hey, we want to come to that." And so uh, they drove up from, drove down from Kansas to be with us. So give them a round of applause for doing that. And uh, it's good. To, she's an old friend from years and years ago, a church I went to when I was a kid. So anyway, it's neat to know that our Facebook doesn't just take care of Greater Navarro County, but goes around the around the United States. All right. Thank you. Well, I got this. I don't. I don't read that. <clears throat> Is everybody, anybody still in line in there? Everybody ready? We're getting ready? We're kind of getting ready? I scared them all off. I feel bad. My last talk was scared everybody away. This one's actually more fun. This one's a little more fun. Should have brought the kids back. Although it's a little sciencey, but not as bad as you think. See if the pastor can round anybody else up, and we'll get, then we'll get started. You guys keep eating. Save me something when I get done. Uh, actually, no, I did have a little bit. Of, so it was great, wonderful food. I want to thank the choir again. That was the best concert I've ever heard in years. Guess it's not really a choir, but. Uh, I haven't seen the pastor come back yet. Even the pastor left. Man. Well, some of you want to hear more. Dinosaurs, can't, you can't go wrong with them. So we're going we're gonna to talk today about dinosaurs. And, you know, do they really show any evolution? And, of course, the obvious answer is No. And we'll, we'll explain why as I go through this talk today. Yeah. Hopefully, if you're in the back and you can't see the pictures, you can come up closer. Now, there's plenty of seats up front. I only spit. Yeah, you're okay in the front row <laughs> when I talk. Oh, I thought the pastor left too, but he came back after all. So, All right. It's really sad when you scare the pastor off, but uh, <laughs> I don't think that's ever happened before. Would have been a first. All right. Well, fasten your seatbelts. We'll see what we can do in the next 40 minutes or so, 45 minutes the most. So the question is, do dinosaurs support evolution? Do they show any evolution? Because they're used all the time. You watch movies, Jurassic Park series, they always throw in the 66 million years ago or 70 million years ago or 150 million years ago. And of course, we were talking on the break there about millions of years, a couple of us. 
And way back before they even had ways to, you know, come up with these millions of years using these time clocks and things, which I think are all suspect because they're built on a bunch of assumptions. But they started tossing around millions of years way back in the 1790s, even before they had a way to call it. Why do you think they jumped from, you know, tens of thousands of years to hundreds of thousands of years to millions of years? I think it's because nobody can even imagine a million years. You can imagine 10,000 years. You can imagine maybe 100,000 years. When you jump to a million, it's basically like monopoly money. It means nothing. And so they use these millions of years to justify what they think evolution could happen. But yet they still can't figure out how the first form of life evolved. They can't figure out where that came from. Nor can they figure out any evolutionary pathways, as we'll see, even with the dinosaurs. So let's move right along. And this is what you're taught in school, you're taught in the movies, you're taught in your DVDs. If you watch any science programs, you're talking about dinosaurs are millions of years old. And this is when I was much younger. I wasn't a million years old. But it's my daughter and I, we were going out west to the old Sinclair gas stations in Wyoming and going to dig dinosaurs. And gas prices were a little lower back in those days than they are now. Uh, but uh, they weren't too bad about a year ago. So anyway, the other idea you hear all the time is dinosaurs and humans never lived together. And that's not true at all. They lived at the same time because God tells us he made dinosaurs the same day he made Adam and Eve, day six of creation. So we'll get to that in a minute. So dinosaurs and humans did coexist even after the flood because God did bring dinosaurs on the ark, as we'll see. So what's the Bible say about dinosaurs? Well, as we'll see later, the word dinosaur is not used in the Bible. And that's because the dinosaur term dinosaur was not coined or invented or whatever you want to call it. There was no word dinosaur until 1841. The King James Bible was translated into English around 1611. So you got a couple hundred years there where the Bible was translated and there was no concept of a dinosaur. And so that's why you don't see the word dinosaur in the Bible. But we do see the Bible referring to the beast of the earth. And that, that's collectively all the animals probably, including the dinosaurs. So God made the beast of the earth according to its kind on day six of creation week. Land animals were created on day six. Birds and swimming animals were created on day five. And so today we'll see dinosaurs and birds are trying to say they're the same thing. But God tells us specifically in the Bible they're, they're separate kinds altogether, made on different days. God also created dinosaurs and all animals to eat plants. We were created to eat plants. Dinosaurs were created to eat plants. It wasn't until Adam and Eve sinned that dinosaurs started eating each other and anything they could, could get their mouths on. So after Adam and Eve sinned, the whole world started spinning downward into more wickedness and more violence. And that's why God finally brought on the flood, because humans were so wicked. He said, let's start over. But he says, also to every beast of the earth, I have given every green herb for food, it says in Genesis. So dinosaurs were on the ark. People ask me all the time, were dinosaurs in the ark? And the answer is yes, because the Bible doesn't exclude any animals. He says, all creatures that moved along the ground, two of every kind and food. So a lot of vegetation probably. He didn't bring pieces of ham for the animal, for the lions and tigers and bears to eat. They would have gone to revert back to what they were created to eat. And there's probably a lot more plant life that was much more nutritious for even the T-Rex that was alive at the time. Today, of course, a lot of those plants might have gone extinct. And so whatever they ate, whatever God created for those animals to eat might have been different. And then, of course, it says in Genesis 7, 21 to 23, everything on land perished. They had the breath of life by day 150 of the flood. We just talked about that earlier. So dinosaurs were on the ark because they were part of that two of every kind. And if you've ever been to Kentucky to see Ken Ham's Ark. Remember, Ken Ham used to work for ICR years ago, and he split off and went on his own. So they're like a sister organization to us in some ways. And we, a lot of our scientists communicate back and forth. And so I encourage you to go, if you ever get that way, to see it, just to see the size of it. Because you can't believe how big it is unless you actually see it. But uh, the ark, their ark, I think, is 500 feet long. 
And so it's between 450 and 500 feet long. Huge, huge arc with three different decks. God talks about it in the Bible. It gives us some of the specifics in terms of the size. But a few years ago, my colleague Jeff Tompkins and I at ICR did the math. And we actually looked at a big database of 350 dinosaurs and figured out the average dinosaur size was the size of this. So you got your American bison or your buffalo, whatever you want to call it. That's the average adult dinosaur size. That's the adult size. But on the ark, God probably brought juveniles. He probably brought teenage dinosaurs before they went through their growth spurt. And he only had to bring about 60 kinds to the ark. There's only about 60 kinds of dinosaurs. There might be over 1,000 species, but species and kind are two different things. Kind is more the family level. So you need just a few cats and a few dog kinds and a few dinosaur kinds. But about 60 different kinds of dinosaurs is really all you really would need. And I think maybe Ken Ham scientists, and, my, and you know, we talked back and forth, they might say 70. So 60, 70, it's about not, big, not that big of a deal. And if they're smaller, they might have only been sheep-sized. Because why would you bring a 131-foot-long sauropod that probably can't reproduce anymore? Because it's just too big and too old. Might have been 800 years old. Just like humans were 800 years old in the pre-flood world, dinosaurs are probably hundreds of years old as well. And so these big, huge dinosaurs we find are probably hundreds and hundreds of years old as well. It says in 2 Timothy 4, 4, in the end times again, Paul's writing to Timothy, he says, they shall turn away their ears from the truth, talking about most of humanity, and they shall be turned into fables. And the Greek word for fables is basically where we get the word myth from. So they should turn it into myths. So in the last days, people are going to spread a lot of myths. And unfortunately, a lot of science today is just that. It's a myth. They're spreading stories of millions of years. They're spreading stories of evolution. So we're going to look at the facts today a little bit as we go through it. And unfortunately, this term called uniformitarianism is common out there. It just means everything's uniform. It means the plates have always moved like they're moving today, just this fast per year. They don't believe it ever moved quickly this much per second in the past, even though the math supports it. And unfortunately, it's in all of our thought patterns. We think of everything happening the same way as we see it today. Because it's hard to imagine there was a global flood. It's hard to imagine there were dinosaurs roaming the earth because we don't see them today. But we need to kind of squeeze those ideas out and go back and look. And look at the rocks. What do the rocks show us? Not only do they show us a record of the flood, but they show us a lot about dinosaurs. And so the facts are found in the rocks. And the true statement here is the rocks don't lie. People do. So remember, the rocks don't lie. People do. They make up those myths and those stories about evolution which don't show any evidence in the rocks at all. That was me when I was much, much younger there, that bottom picture. Much, much, much younger. I had a white, now I have a white mustache, so I had to shave it off. I was like, you look so old. I'm like, oh, okay. I am. All right, dinosaurs, as I mentioned, the term dinosaur was defined in 1841 by this happy-looking guy here, Sir Richard Owen, who didn't believe in evolution through his whole life, by the way. He fought against Darwin until he died in the later 19th century. He defined dinosaurs as a reptile that walked erect. So you can see the dinosaur there on the left side, the lizard in the middle. Lizards sprawl today. If you're a reptile and you have legs, you sprawl. There's no dinosaurs today alive. They all went extinct after the flood. We'll talk maybe about that a little later. So they're different. Dinosaurs walk with their legs coming straight down. They had holes in their hips, just like you and I do. So we walk erect. Dinosaurs walked erect as well. So we're going to look at four evolutionary myths about dinosaurs, four stories that are being taught and perpetual stories over and over and over. And one is, of course, that dinosaurs are buried slowly, although some scientists are now coming around to this. But you read through a lot of the textbooks, they'll talk about dinosaurs buried slowly. And you'll hear a lot about dinosaurs having ancestors, how they evolved from this animal or that animal, this animal or that animal. And then you'll hear this story about dinosaurs evolved into birds. That's the most common myth you'll hear today. And you'll hear a lot of scientists say dinosaurs are birds, which pains me greatly. And some of the secular scientists are actually fighting back on that now as well. And finally, of course, you always hear that dinosaurs are millions of years old. 
And the oldest dinosaur is now thought to be about 232 million years old, and they all went extinct about 66 million years ago. You might have learned 65 million years ago, but about 10 years ago, they changed that. So 66 now, you know, what's a million years to you and me? So we were wrong, but they're wrong on all these numbers. I never made my students memorize the numbers because they're always changing them. And sure enough, they did here as well. So our myth number one, dinosaurs are buried slowly. This is what Bob Bakker wrote in his book, The Dinosaur Heresies. And he's a well-known, uh, he was a cowboy hat. He fit right in here with a vest and everything. He's a well-known uh, dinosaur paleontologist. Uh, he says, after six months or a year or two, the monsoon rains return, the level of the lake rises, spreading a soft blanket of limey mud over the sun-dried bodies. So it's in his view, of course, these dinosaurs died for whatever reason, laid there for months, and were slowly buried you know, over a year or two's time. And that, and that isn't the case. As we talked about earlier, if you run over an animal, you see something get hit or killed, it doesn't just lay there for a year or two or months just waiting to be buried slowly. You have to bury animals fast and deep to make a fossil. And we also see dinosaurs are found in bone beds with marine fossils mixed in. I talked about this earlier. And so really what we do see, you see those clams there right next to these dinosaur bones. You go to Montana, you look at the Hell Creek Formation. I talked about this earlier as well. There used to be five. Now there's six species of sharks, shark teeth, diff six different species found with the T-Rexes right in the same rocks. They actually found the sixth one about two years ago, right underneath where they dug out Tyrannosaurus rex Sioux. Literally underneath the bones where they dug out Tyrannosaurus rex Sioux, they found another shark tooth. So you had this mixing of land and marine, just exactly what you'd expect. It's big waves coming in, washing in a bunch of marine critters along with them, and then backing off. And what you see there is a mixing of you know, dinosaurs with fish and dinosaurs with sharks. That's to be expected in a global flood. And that's what we find. Bony fishes, crocodiles, etc. So this is just numbers. These are the numbers of species. I used to teach this at a secular college. And not one of my students said, well, isn't that kind of weird? There's sharks with dinosaurs. You know, we don't teach our students to think. They don't want to think because it hurts. But, you know, there should be people asking questions. Why are there sharks? And they have to say, well, they're all freshwater sharks. You know, there's not many freshwater sharks today. And this is my favorite. This guy spoke in Dallas about five years ago. He found in Morocco the Spinosaurus that you see in the Jurassic Park 3 movie. Who's seen Jurassic Park 3? Spinosaurus. See, some of you know what I'm talking about. Spinosaurus is bigger than the T-Rex. It's like 45 feet long, the largest meat-eating dinosaur ever discovered. And it's found with these fish it's eating called a coelacanth. And the coelacanth fish live in the ocean today. They're a living fossil, in fact. They're supposed to go extinct with the dinosaurs in the Cretaceous. But they're still swimming in the oceans today. They found them in the 1930s in two different locations now in the Indian Ocean. And they live 500 feet down. They live 500 feet down in the ocean. They don't live at the surface. So when they bring them up, their eyes crystallize over because the pressure drop. So these are deep water marine fish. What are they doing in rocks with a Spinosaurus? So I asked the speaker after he got done talking at SMU, and I said, well, how do you explain the coelacanths, car-sized coelacanth fish, car-sized, six, seven, eight, ten feet long, how do you explain those with the Spinosaurus goes, oh, those are freshwater fish back then. Like, but their fossils are identical to the animals we're finding alive today that live 500 feet down. This is what evolutionists do. They create their own myths to explain what they see. So they have to say they were freshwater sharks. These are freshwater coelacanths. But yet there's no evidence that any of these were freshwater animals. It's a mixing of land and marine. And you bury things so fast, sometimes you can actually capture an animal giving birth. These are ichthyosaur, a swimming reptile. Looks like a porpoise, kind of, but it's a swimming reptile that God designed to give live birth. And it was just captured. And you can see there's more of the babies inside of its rib cage. There's even some more vertebrae in there as well. So to me, that's one of them amazing. This is the most amazing discovery of all, I believe. The fighting dinosaurs from Mongolia. And here you have a velociraptor, which... I don't want to ruin anybody's day, but velociraptors are only this big. <laughs> they're only this big, and their skulls are about that long. 
So they're really not that big. What they show you in the movies, and they call it a velociraptor, is a Deinonychus, which is a bigger raptor. But it's the, Steven Spielberg messed up the names because he liked velociraptor better. So he called this bigger raptor the wrong name, etc. So they're really quite small. But here it's fighting with a protoceratops, which is a plant eater. Of course, they all were originally plant eaters. But you can see how they're fighting the arm of the Velociraptor is in the mouth of the Protoceratops. The Protoceratops is like a trapped rat. It's going to bite because it has to. And so it's about to bite down the arm of the Velociraptor. Probably would have snapped it in half. But before it could bite down, it was buried instantly. That's how fast the floodwaters came in. And it froze them in this position for thousands of years until they were dug up in the 1970s. I mean, that's like two WWE wrestlers going at it. They get in a chokehold and you're buried instantly in that chokehold for thousands of years. That's what these dinosaurs are doing. So this is a truly amazing discovery. It's called an, a life assemblage. It shows you a snapshot of life. But to me, that shows rapid burial. Proof these things are buried fast. So dinosaurs and fossils in general are the result of catastrophic burial. Conditions of the flood coming in fast and deep is the rule. Even some of the secular scientists are saying this now in their lectures. They're actually coming around. Let's move on to our second point. Dinosaurs had many ancestors. You guys just keep eating. You're doing good. <laughs> I hear this low crump crunching sounds going on in the background. And anyway, dinosaurs had many ancestors. Let's look at this. This is, a, this is quite a myth. You read Scientific American or any of these magazines that are supposed to be sciencey, and they're political journals. They're just pushing their agenda. And so there, there really are no ancestors. Did dinosaurs evolve? I'm going to give you three examples. And this is really, this picture is to show you my daughter. See her in there between the legs? So when my daughter and I were in Wyoming, and they were, this was a, a replica of a seismosaurus, which is found in New Mexico. It's 131 feet long. They only found about half of it, because you don't normally find a complete dinosaur. So they said, what if you had the whole thing, how big would it be? So it's a plastic replica. So this animal was probably seven, 800 years old before it was buried in the flood. But sauropods in general, the long necks, all had large body size, four-legged stance, small head, 10 or more neck bones, which no animal today has. God designed these things wonderfully. Elongate neck bones, so they could have this big long neck, and, a, and an equally long tail. And God designed the vertebrae in the neck and the tail to be hollowed out. He hollowed out the neck so it wouldn't be very heavy. He didn't put a big head on the, these animals, or their head would just lay there all day long. You have a big, long neck and a big head in the end, you're just kind of like, eh, I can't pick my head up. It's like you're watching, you know, too much NFL football. You kind of like lay there and you can't get up. Three games in a row. It's going to happen to some of us again. So God designed these to walk around on four legs because they had to. But they're perfectly designed, almost like a walking bridge. Very unique but we look at the rock layers where we find most of our sauropods. That's the, called the Jurassic layers. Most sauropods are found in the Jurassic layers. They're in the middle of the dinosaur rocks. Dinosaurs are buried in Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous rocks. Then they disappear because then the water levels went higher to a different environment. Talked about that earlier. But we look for what's below these sauropods, these apatosaurs. And you look in the Triassic, and there's nothing. There's no partial long necks. There's no half long necks. There's just no, nothing, and all of a sudden there's long necks. Fully formed, fully designed, functional, long-necked animals. Where are these transitions? Dr. Paul Serino, professor at the University of Chicago, he's an evolutionist. Early on, I, he says, again, I think researchers, and maybe even lay people, which is most of us, really felt we had more ancestors in the fossil record than we actually do. We don't have a lot of ancestors. We have a lot of twigs. And we'll see later there are no ancestors, but we'll keep moving. We'll look at another example. Here's my daughter again for scale. I had kids just to make scale. You guys have kids for scale? As a geologist, you know, you're always looking at rocks and things. You got to have something for scale. So my daughter was about seven here at the time. She's now 30 years old. She's a nurse. And so I'm pretty proud of her. But she used to go dinosaur digging with me in the summers out to Wyoming. So here's the University of Wyoming's museum, Triceratops. See the big skull, frills, and horns? Well, here's all the variety of Triceratops kinds. 
Lots of horns of every shape. Two horns, three horns, no horns. But they all have the basic body shape. So they're all probably the same basic kind. Just like you look around this room and none of us look the same. We all have different shapes to our skulls, eyes, different widths apart, noses different sizes, hair different colors, skin different colors. Just like these things. God loves variety, apparently, because he put a lot of variety in his animal kingdom and even in humans. But we're all still humans. We're only one race. There's one race. The human race. Adam and Eve are the ancestors to all humans. And they, of course, there was a bottleneck at the time of Noah. But then they branched out again. But there's only one race, just like there's only several, only about 60 kinds of dinosaurs. So we look for ancestors to the tri Triceratops, or the Ceratopsians, they're called, the hornheads. Most of the Triceratops are found in Cretaceous rocks, that upper dinosaur level. And you look below them in the Jurassic or the Triassic, you see nothing that looks like the Triceratops animal. It's like they just show up out of nowhere, fully formed, four-legged, big frills, big horns. There's no ancestors to any of them. Let's look at the T-Rex. This is a picture I took in Chicago. You can go to the museum in Chicago. Field Museum. Tyrannosaurus rex Sioux is there. One of the biggest T-Rexes ever discovered. And amazingly, it's about 90% real. It's all complete. So most of this is real bones, except for the skull. They have that in a different showcase. Do they have answers? So I got a chance to dig on T-Rexes up in Montana. And you can see there's a T-Rex tooth next to my rock hammer in that one picture. We are digging away in a bone bed. And again, you look for ancestors of T-Rexes. T-Rexes are found in that Cretaceous level with the Triceratops. You look in the Jurassic, there's nothing. You look in the Triassic, there's nothing. There's nothing that looks like a T-Rex. So they have no ancestors at all. David Wiseample says this from Johns Hopkins University. He says, from my reading of the fossil record of dinosaurs, no direct ancestors have been discovered for any dinosaur species. Alas, my list of dinosaur ancestors is an empty one. David Wiseample probably looked at more dinosaurs than anybody alive today. He's the lead author of the Dinosauria, which is their Bible on dinosaurs. And he says there's nothing. Remember, Serena says, well, there's not much. Well, the guy that's seen more says there's nothing. My list is empty. There's no direct ancestors for any dinosaur species. They just appear out of nothing because that's the order they were buried in the flood. So myth busting through the facts, all dinosaurs appear in rocks without ancestors. The fossil record is stasis that shows the same animals. Like we see, we can still find coelacanths today. Nothing's evolving. We can find some of the same animals alive today as we see in the rock record. They didn't change at all. And there's no known ancestors to any dinosaur group or any animal. There's no ancestors to the trilobites. There's no ancestors to the brachiopods. All the fossils just show up fully formed, functional, ready to go to work, just the way God designed them. But they're buried in order in the flood because the order is reflecting the elevations as the flood waters rose higher and higher. So our third point we'll move on to, dinosaurs evolved into birds. This is really big. Your kids are hearing this in school. Your kids are going to hear this in college. They're going to hear this in TV. They even sneak it in the Jurassic Park movies. They make dinosaurs warm-blooded. They make dinosaurs breathing and steaming up the windows. Dinosaurs were not warm-blooded. The evidence is strong. They were, they were cold-blooded. talk about this in my book, The Evidence Pro and Con. They're making them into birds, so they've got to make them warm-blooded to make them into birds. Yet there's very strong evidence they were cold-blooded, just like all reptiles. They just walk differently. And they're putting feathers on them. Did some dinosaurs have feathers? Did they look like this? You see these drawings all the time. Anybody see these things ever? They're always coming up with a new one, feathered dinosaur. Even creation paleontologists are pushing dinosaurs had feathers, which pains me to no end because they're buying into the secular myths. It doesn't support it by the facts. There's even a secular bird paleontologist who wrote a book last year and said, these guys are all wrong. There's no dinosaurs with feathers at all. And he's an evolutionist. 
And he points out the real facts support that dinosaurs, not one dinosaur had feathers. This is a bird. This one bird, this is a true bird, Archaeopteryx. It had feathers. So this was found in the 19th century over in Bavaria, southern Germany. They found about 11 of these now. One of these is on display in Wyoming. You can go to Thermopolis, Wyoming. You can see the only real specimen of this bird in the Western Hemisphere. And I went to London thinking I'm going to see another one. Woohoo! Nope, it's a replica. The real one's head, they don't even show it on display. Because they're so rare, they're worried someone will just steal them or destroy them. The one in Wyoming's got about six layers of glass protecting it. If you ever watched that movie National Treasure, trying to get to the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence, it's about the same protection because these are so rare. But they are real birds found in the Jurassic rocks. Remember, Jurassic rocks. This is Sinosopteryx. This was supposed to show proto feathers. See those little hair like whispers coming off? Well, they're not really feathers at all. They're not even proto feathers. Steve Brousset said this, and he believes dinosaurs had feathers, paleontologist at the University of Edinburgh, Scotland. But he's from the States here. He says, the bones of these species are covered with a thick, feathery fluff, not the quill pen feathers of living birds, but simpler, filament-like feathers that look like hair. So you go back and look at this. kind of looks like hair coming off these things a little bit. Alan Fiducia, who's the guy I talked about earlier, he's the bird paleontologist who doesn't buy into the feathered dinosaurs. He actually demonstrated back in 2005 that similar structures are produced by the decomposition of collagen in the skin. So we all have collagen in our skin to kind of hold it all together. It gives it strength, it gives us the saddles. Well, if you squish an animal very quickly, those collag collagenous fibers are going to kind of look like hair coming off. And he did that. He took a dolphin, which has a little bit of hair, but not much. And he squished it, and he made these, these fibers. These are the collagen fibers that came off the end. So it looked like this dolphin had all this hair sticking off its body, which they call proto-feathers, because they're evolving from scales into feathers, which they don't know how to explain that either. But that's what they try to say. So they find these dinosaurs, they have this hair stuff coming off, and really all they're looking at is collagen. It was squished out of the skin. But yet that's ignored by mainstream science. And these are real feathers here. Most evidence, of course, comes from one location in China, which should worry you. And it worries me, because stuff from China isn't always real. But this is Microraptor. It had feathers on its back legs, feathers on its front legs. And by the way, Archaeopteryx had feathers on its back legs, too. This probably, just the, the only thing about Archaeopteryx and Microraptor that makes it different than a bird today is that bony tail. And they might have been the same species. These are about the size of a crow. And so this thing had feathers as well. So there are real birds in the fossil record that had feathers, but this is not a dinosaur. But here's what came out of China back in, two, actually, 1999. Archaeoraptor is a fraud. Well, they claim they had a dinosaur that's half bird, half dinosaur. So they found their missing link between birds and dinosaurs that they always wanted. So all these paleontologists all over the world said, oh, this is awesome. And they found out later when... A professor from the University of Texas CT scanned it. He showed that it really was a bird and a dinosaur glued together. So it was totally a fraud. National Geographic did a front page article on it, made a big article, and then a year later they had to put a little retraction in the back of their issue about a two-page retraction saying, sorry, uh, it was our mistake. They actually didn't even admit that. But it's unfortunately, you know, the, the damage is done. Because they put these news blurbs out there and people believe it. And they never really announced the retraction. This should go along with it. So there's really no feathered dinosaurs at all. And in 2017, which isn't all that long ago, the research article came out that shows without question T-Rex had scaly skin. Because you can find the scaly skin imprints. There's hundreds of dinosaur imprints of skin. And they all show scaly skin. It goes, but without question... T-Rex had scaly skin, said author Phil Bell. And that's really pained him. Because you'll still see today T-Rex drawings with feathers on them. And baby T-Rexes with feathers on them. There's an article that came out just last year. I wrote a news article on They're still showing baby T-Rexes with feathers. And they showed, without question, T-Rex had scaly skin. Here's T-Rex scaly skin. 
This is what the scales of a T-Rex look like. I don't have any scale there. My daughter wasn't there. <laughs> they need scale. But, you know, probably so big. There's different types of them. So the biggest problem, though, is, is another one that's not talked about, is that birds are found in rocks below the so-called bird-like dinosaurs, below the raptors. The raptors are supposed to be the kind of ancestors to birds, but yet they're found in Cretaceous rocks, like Deinonychus and Velociraptor, whereas Archaeopteryx, true birds with feathers are already found in Jurassic rocks down below. So if you believe the secular time scale, you've got 40 to 70 million years of time when you already have birds, and then you have bird-like dinosaurs, supposedly, that turn into birds. So you had to, your birds had to evolve again. That doesn't make any sense. And that's, again, not discussed much. A few books will bring it up. So what, how do they explain this away? And I actually showed a DVD when I used to teach a dinosaur class. They showed this. They have ghost lineages. Dinosaur paleontologists believe in ghosts. They really do. Because they say, okay, we know dinosaurs turn into birds, even though the rocks don't show up. So there had to be an ancestor to both. An unknown ancestor, they call it today, down in the Triassic, that was the ancestor to both birds and dinosaurs. So you can find a bird in the Jurassic, and you can find a bird-like dinosaur in the Cretaceous, because it's an ancestor to both somewhere down there below. We just haven't found it. And they never have. And I predict they never will. Because we haven't found any ancestors of any dinosaurs, let alone birds. And so unfortunately, this is taught as science. It was taught as science when I was in school just a few years ago. This is being taught to your kids. And they call it science when it's really, it's just a myth. Totally made up based on nothing whatsoever. Gunther Weil, he retired before he said this from the Euro Museum in Germany. So the dinosaurs in China are not the ancestors of birds, of course. They can't be because they are later than Archaeopteryx. So he says they came in there, you know, rocks much later, millions of years later in their mind. There must have been older dinosaurs with feathers, yet we haven't found any evidence for them, unfortunately. So he thinks it's awful. But yet it's still taught as fact that dinosaurs are birds. Dinosaurs have feathers. And unfortunately, even some creation paleontologists out there, good friends of mine, are pushing on their YouTube, the dinosaurs had feathers. And I don't think the evidence supports it whatsoever. When you look at the facts, God made dinosaurs on day six. He made birds on day five. If you get feathers, you're a bird. Although the definition of a bird is still not that well defined. Nonetheless, myth busting number three is this. Dinosaurs did not evolve into birds. Birds are buried in rocks before the most bird-like dinosaurs, supposedly, and then some bird-like dinosaurs are just hoax. I could have gave you another example of a hoax, but I left it out. All from China, of course. But you won't find this crawling around your backyard. They actually tried to take a bird egg and turn it into a dinosaur. They've been trying for decades now to do what they call evo-devo, evolutionary development. They're trying to tweak the genes and try to reconstruct a bird into a dinosaur through the egg. And it's, they've failed miserably for the last 20 years because they're, as they used to say in Michigan, barking up the wrong tree. You guys see that down here in Texas? Barking up the wrong tree? If you get a skewed view of science, your science you're trying to do is going to be skewed as well. So let's look at the last point because some of you want to go home eventually. Who, who wants to go home eventually? You're done eating now, so you, you're ready to go home. All right, dinosaurs are millions of years old. That's the story you hear all the time. And it's very subtle. They sneak it in, even the Jurassic Park movies. But we talked about this earlier as well. Mary Schweitzer, in 2005, I believe it was, she looked at soft tissue. She dissolved away too much bone from a T-Rex thigh that broke open. T-Rex thigh bone, she put it in acid, dissolved away too much bone, and she found this soft, squishy stuff. So that first picture, A, with the arrow, that white stuff actually is like a rubber band. It's stretched when you watch the video of this. It's still soft and stretchy. After millions of years, how can it still be soft and stretchy? And then she did more and more tests on it and found these are real proteins. These are real collagen proteins. These are real blood vessel proteins. And we talked about this last talk as well because it can't be emphasized enough. 
physical chemists, and you can do studies, and we've got some people at our lab, Brian Thomas, my colleague, Dr. Brian Thomas, is working on this, trying to come up with some decay rates for some of these proteins. But a lot of them have been published. They've been published for decades, showing the collagen can't last even one million years, even under the best conditions. That's like taking that saddle and putting it in a freezer, leaving it there, then it has a chance of surviving a couple hundred thousand years. But if you leave it out, it's not going to last that long. But not, even under the best conditions, it can't even last one million years. Yet these collagens in the T-Rex are supposed to be 68 million, 70 million. Some of these blood vessels are 150 million years old, supposedly. Again, you talked about those worms, supposed to be 500 million years old. There's been 115 papers published on these, finding these discoveries of these over and over and over and over and over. And yet, they can't explain any of them. Here's the blood vessels. Back, way back in 2017, some of you remember that year, pre-COVID, <laughs> life was fun. We just didn't know it. It's still fun because we have God. We have hope. We have Jesus. If you've accepted Christ, we have hope. If you haven't, please consider it. Because without Jesus, you have no hope, just like the people that didn't get on the ark. They had no hope. They had 150 days of judgment until they were wiped out. But we have hope. So here you can see the blood vessel. Those black dots are the blood cells. And then those little brown things that look like they're swimming along underneath, those are bone-making cells called osteocytes. You can see the little filia, where the little fingers kind of come out. It's all still preserved. We see this over and over and over. This isn't, you know, Institute for Creation Research doing this research. These are evolutionary scientists who believe these things are 195 million years old, but yet they can't explain how they can survive that long. There's no explanation. The Mosasaur supposed to be 110 million years old, found in Kansas. You can see the red parts in there because the red came from the hemoglobin in the blood around the heart and the liver. And even the retina and the eyes were still there and the scales were still there, original scales. The more and more we look at these animals, the more we're finding original parts are still there. Nobody thought that 20, 30 years ago, but they're there. And then we see evidence of human interaction with dinosaurs after the flood because dinosaurs got on the ark they got off the ark as well. They just didn't grow as big because the conditions, I think, of the post-flood world were different than the pre-flood world. It wasn't ideal. It was a more harsh world with a lot of rain and an ice age that came on right after the flood that affected you know, mostly the north. But here in Texas, you still had mammoths and mastodons roaming around. They walked over here from the ark because it was a land bridge caused by the lowering of sea level by all that ice. So God had a plan even to repopulate the world with animals and humans. And humans right off the bat were doing what? They were disobeying. They were staying around the Tower of Babel. Let's just stay here. And they were going to miss that little window of opportunity to walk across the land bridge that God had set forth. So he had to kind of move humans along and spread them out by confounding the languages. But God had a plan. He had a plan to bring us salvation as well. There's lots of these examples. In the Bible, you can read in Job 40 and Job 41 about Behemoth and Leviathan. I talk about these in my dinosaur book as well. Behold now Behemoth, which I made with you. He eats grass like an ox. His strength is in his loins, the force in his muscles of his belly. He moves his tail like a cedar. I try to find an animal today that moves his tail like a cedar that isn't a dinosaur. You know, your book will say hippopotamus. Your Bible will often have a little footnote, crocodile. Even crocodiles' tails aren't quite like a cedar. And then you used to scoff here. People used to say, oh, no dinosaur ate grass because grass didn't evolve until after dinosaurs were gone. But then they found in 2005, again, they found dinosaur dung. I hope you guys are done eating. <laughs> dinosaur dung, fossilized dinosaur dung with five species of grass in it. And they're like, oh, there was grass. It's just hard to fossilize grass. And the amazing thing is that dung came with sauropod bones, just like Behemoth probably was, a long-necked dinosaur. So you find the dinosaur bones, their dung, showing they actually ate grass. The Bible is right all along. Why do we doubt the Bible? 
We should never doubt the Bible. But we can see that science does verify the Bible. Science confirms the Bible. And that's exactly what we'd expect. You can see the Narmer Palette, ancient Egypt. You can see it looks like two Egyptians are wrestling with these two big long-necked dinosaurs. Now, notice the legs come straight down, just like the definition of a dinosaur. Again, that wasn't discovered until 1841. How did the Egyptians know to bring these legs straight down on this animal? How did the Mesopotamians know to these long-necked, probably dinosaur-looking things? How did they know to draw these things that look like this, for one thing, and then to bring the legs straight down if they had never seen a dinosaur? These people had seen dinosaurs. They might have made a little cat-like face to it, but sometimes the Brachiosaurus kind of looks like that. But how would you have legs coming straight down? Long tail, long neck. Looks nothing like anything alive today. And here's two sauropods carved on a, the floor of a cathedral in England. Actually, I think it might be up in Scotland. Dated at 1478. So here we are, 400 years, less than 400 years before we discovered dinosaurs. And they already have carvings that look just like a dinosaur. If you, if you saw a dinosaur today, this is what you draw. But these people didn't see the bones that we found 400 years later. So they must have seen the real things. Those knights were not just killing dragons. They were probably killing small dinosaurs. And then here's one of my favorites, Angkor Temple, I believe it is, in Cambodia, which I discovered about 30 years ago, 20, 30 years ago. And there's a whole wall. We have this at our Discovery Center. You can see the whole column reproduced. And one of the pictures looks just like this. The one above, it's a monkey. The one below, it's a lion. The one above, that's a water buffalo. Every other animal on that column is real. Still alive today, except for this one. But yet, oh, this is just a mythical one. But everything else is real. To me, this looks like a pretty good rendition of a stegosaurus. Again, legs coming straight down. So there's lots of evidence, not only in the Bible, but other texts. Marco Polo supposedly saw dragons in China. Carvings that look like dinosaurs, paintings that look like dinosaurs, legs coming straight down. Which, how would they know to draw them that way? Because no animal today, no lizard today has legs coming straight down. But the soft tissue creates problems for evolutionists. They don't know how to explain these original proteins. Because in their world, they're millions of years old, but yet the proteins show they can't be. But it's not a problem if you believe God's word. Because God's word tells us the earth's not that old. And the flood wasn't that long ago. And there really was a flood. Fossils don't take long to form, they just take the right conditions. And I think the flood provided those rapid burial conditions, catastrophic burial conditions, rapid and deep. And here I am getting plastered with the hat on there. That's how Baptists get plastered. So I don't know how you guys do it here at Cowboy Church, but all right, that was my attempt at humor. My students in college used to say, I'll appreciate his attempts at humor. I'm like, well, that was an attempt at humor. Anyway, this guy uh, in the blonde hair there, that was Evil Frank. I don't know what happened to him, but he got arrested because he stole a bunch of dinosaur bones. One that I actually found, a stegosaurus plate. And uh, I don't know what ever happened to him, but uh, they wouldn't tell me. But uh, we never did get the stegosaur plate that I found. I have pictures of it. That's about it. But uh, he was nice Frank at the time when I knew him. He was teaching me how to do all this stuff. And then he became evil Frank later that summer. So we'll just leave it at that. All right, finally, to wrap up, and we'll let you guys get out of here, there's four evolutionary myths that I, that I hopefully have busted for you today, or at least made you think about. One, dinosaurs are not buried, so they're buried rapidly in the flood, in the order of burial that we see, because that's the elevation. As the water went higher and higher, you get different elevations. Some dinosaurs could outrun others as well. So it's kind of a complicated thing. It isn't all small dinosaurs at the start, because there's small dinosaurs even later in the dinosaur rocks. And so some of it had to do with, I think, their intelligence. A lot of the raptors had bigger brains for their body size than most dinosaurs, and I think they reacted to danger a little bit better, so they were found in the Cretaceous rocks. But then all the dinosaurs disappeared at that level. Dinosaurs did not have any ancestral forms. You heard the secular paleontologist admit it even. And you look at the rocks, they're not there. Number three, dinosaurs did not evolve into birds. Number one, you already had birds in rocks below the supposed bird-like dinosaurs. So how do you explain that? 
And yet there's no ancestors to any of those either. Dinosaurs never had feathers. I don't believe. You know, people are like, well, I couldn't God have made dinosaurs with feathers. Well, he could have, but I don't believe he did because there's no evidence that he did. So even though some of my creation paleontology colleagues are out there at other organizations saying dinosaurs had feathers, uh, the science, to me, the evidence, the rocks don't support that at all. Only birds had feathers from what we can see so far. Dinosaurs had scaly skin, just like the T-Rex. And finally, last but not least, of course, dinosaurs are only about 4,400, 4,500 years old. Because that's when the flood occurred. That's where you find the fossils. And there were dinosaurs after the flood, but they don't leave fossils. Because things that die today, unless you're buried rapidly and deep, the condition of the flood, you don't make a fossil. And so there's almost no fossils forming today. So if you go extinct today, you're not going to leave a fossil. You're just going to die and rot away. Even a lot of the humans, there's not a lot of human fossils in the flood. You heard me talking about maybe a billion people. What happened to them all? Well, a lot of them washed offshore as the water was receding. So we find dinosaurs offshore in Norway. They drilled an oil well offshore in Norway, 70 miles offshore, one and a half miles down. They took a core up this big around. They found a dinosaur toe bone they could identify as a platyosaurus. So the tsunami waves are washing animals in. They're also washing animals out. And the humans were probably smartest, you know, creating God's image, survived to the end of the flood, close to day 145, 140, 150, before all the humans not on the earth were killed and they were spread back over on top of everything. So they probably weren't buried very deep, if they were buried at all. And so they either rotted at the surface or they rotted underground, very shallow burials. You don't survive either. You've got to be buried deep to cut off the oxygen sufficiently enough to make a fossil. So I think most humans, and then of course the erosion's at the top. So after 4,000 years of erosion, you're going to erode away the human fossils if there were any. So there's a few human fossils, but hardly any compared to most animals because we were buried last and not deep enough. And the fossils really are very young. So in the back, you can read more about the dinosaurs in this third greatest book ever written. It was the second greatest book until the other one came along. Yeah, but this one actually has a lot of cool pictures. Even three-year-olds like the pictures in this one. I encourage you to go look at the pictures, if nothing else. Uh, some of them I took, but uh, a lot of them were really good pictures from museums around the world. Really good illustrated, well-illustrated book. Uh, and the text explains, you know, exactly what I was talking about today in more detail as well. And, of course, the fun book for the grandkids, along with the Henry dolls in the back, Big Plans for Henry, which the second in the series will be coming out just in time for Christmas this year, so you can order at icr.org. And then here's the video. You can order the four-part video on dinosaurs. And one of these four videos, they're all three, no, four 20-minute videos. One of those videos, and it comes with a little book as, as well, is all about the original soft tissues and dinosaur proteins. So if you want to know a little bit more about that, you don't want to read, you can watch this DVD. I know it's old technology. DVDs are old. You know, it's actually well worth it. We did a lot of good computer animation, as you saw in my first talk. And then, if you don't buy any other book, this is the book I would buy. This talks about dinosaurs. It talks about the Big Bang Theory, why it doesn't work. It talks about apes and chimps and how we're not like apes and chimps at all, I talked about earlier. And it talks about the mega sequences and the flooding and all that's in here, plus some of the reasons not to believe the day-age theory and reasons not to believe the gap theory. That some of these ideas that people have put forth trying to fit great ages into the Bible. You don't need to believe that. You can believe your word of God the way it's written. Because science shows a young earth, a young universe in a recent flood. And there's also free stuff. If nothing else, sign up. Come to our Discovery Center up there in Dallas. We're in the northwest corner of the city of Dallas. We're not downtown. Free parking. Although there's a cost to get in, but there's a 3D planetarium shows, 2D planetarium shows, uh, really well done. My wife, who was kind of a skeptic at times, thought, oh, this is going to be cheesy. And she went through the mission, this is awesome. I mean, there's a lot of computer animation, a lot of shows. You can read, the, you can watch these little shows, the little seven-minute shows, the five-minute shows, three-minute shows. And there's even more detail in these computer kiosks if you want to dig into more. So you can spend four hours there, you can spend two hours uh, but it's, you can get the m message that science and the Bible match perfectly. Real science matches God's word. 
Mythical science doesn't. But the real science, the rocks, the fossils, the dinosaurs, all confirm exactly with what your Bible says. If you can believe the book of Genesis, you can believe anything. And the science is supporting the book of Genesis. So if Genesis is true, then maybe we do need a savior. Maybe humans did mess up, Adam and Eve did. And that caused the earth to literally go out of control. But God had a plan. And his plan was, of course, to send his own son, God himself, willingly gave his life for you and for me. And we can be saved through his grace. We don't deserve it. But God offers it because he loves us that much. He loves everybody. He wants everybody to come to him. With that, I'll turn it back over to you, Pastor. Thank you very much. Well, he did a wonderful job. Thank you so much. And I learned, tell me, I learned three things today. I learned a lot about the flood. I learned a lot about dinosaurs. And also learned that Sheila's not a Baptist because I've seen her plastered before and it didn't look nothing like that. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, he just did a wonderful job. Hey, don't forget all the resources back here. And uh, I want to thank each of you for being here. And, and I'm sure he'd, he'd love to visit with you. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we will be dismissed. Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for these resources. Pray, God, that it brings encourage, uh, encouragement to the heart and the spirit. And, Lord, again, we can leave here today knowing we can have great confidence in what we believe. Father, for what you do, we praise you. Watch over our church and watch over uh, this institute. And Lord, I pray that as we continue to point people to Jesus, God, I pray that they'd be able to continue to point people to the true evidences of creation. Lord, for all you do, we praise you, and it's in your name we ask these things. Amen. God bless each of you.